right. So it gives them the proper information for one. And for two, they can't bitch at us or talk shit or sue us or anything like that because what are we doing? Just sharing. Right, but we're reading from their books. Like this is all public information. It's not like it's anything that can't be got by any other means. If they don't like people reading it, they shouldn't have put it in the books. They thought they were being slick by hiding it from everybody in books. Well, we about to put an end to that shit. Well, we finally know which books to read. Yeah, that's always been the hard part. Well, just about anything on law will lead to the whole bankruptcy thing and credit. And credit basically thing. it all brings you right back to this anyway. Yeah. And the highway thing. <laughs> right. I think it's uh, in the back of this book. If I remember correctly, it spoke about um, how uh, when we get our birth certificate or certificate of live birth authenticated, that is the debtor authorizing automatically the secured party. So that's an automatic lien uh, for when the secured party stays in possession of that document the instrument that's slick i like that because that's the <clears throat> that's one of the things that i'm waiting on is to um not well not waiting on it's i got to get my short form before i start doing it um i've got a long form already and i've already do, i've already done my trust i did my trust through sovereign filing and i filed everything myself um that was an excellent fucking learning experience might i add um, my uncle and I did it together <clears throat> and we actually, we got a discount for doing three people. Hmm. Um, and it was only 150 each and they knocked 50 bucks off each of us and um, getting ready to send out a UCC 11. That's going to tell us what debt there is, if any, which we all know there isn't because you were frozen. Oh, did you miss a bunch? Yeah. Mm. What was the last thing you heard? Nothing. <laughs> Start over. Okay. So, back in 2016, my uncle and I filed our um, trust together through Sovereign Filing Solutions. Um, the UCC1, security agreement, all that, yada, yada, yada. Um we didn't do an authentication of the birth certificate because back then that wasn't a big um, topic of discussion, at least not as much as it is today. Um, and they said that it wasn't completely necessary. We now know that in order to perfect it after the fact, it is necessary, but that's all right. It's a small step. Um, so... I've just filed my DBA, mailed that out yesterday. I've got the TDA account. I just need to get the medallion stamp on that. Um, I've got my D&B number. I've got both my EINs, my estate 8283 and my 98. Um, FINS goes out this week, next week. Um, UCC 11 is going to be going out next week. And then the only other thing that I have to worry about is the passport, death certificate, and birth certificate getting authenticated. I noticed that some people are getting hung up who uh, start using the qualified signature signing authorized representative before they have authenticated their birth certificates. Yep. So it seems that authenticating first would be the right would be the proper order. Yeah. That would be the proper order. Um, that's, and that's what I'm telling everybody else that I deal with is the first things first, order your birth certificates, get them authenticated. 
because the second you have them authenticated right then and there, you have full faith and credit of the United States. And then we need instructions on how to record the document. You mean the... Um, well, would we take that to the land recorder? Once, once you get it back from the uh, from DC, what I've heard that you have to do is file it in county, send a copy to everybody. I mean everybody. Um, so yeah, I, w I would I would guess that would fall under. What's up, Tuan? How you doing, brother? Chris, how's it going? I'm good. How you doing? I'm living, man. I'm living. Trying to get this secured party creditor life going, you know. I'm waiting on two more people that I know are supposed to be showing up. And then we'll get this thing started. Anybody else have any stories they want to share in the meantime while we wait how far they've gotten, where they're at in their process? Have you read Statutory Supplement to Admiralty and Maritime Law in the United States? Say that again. Statutory Supplement to Admiralty and Maritime Law in the United States. I have not read that. Okay, that's like a summary of a bunch of congressional acts, a summary of Grant Gilmore's, um, let's see, Law of Admiralty. Yeah. And it's the basis for the UCC. Oh. So if yeah, and it's pretty short. I think and it's short. So that would be a good thing to. Do you have that? Yeah. Um, if you can, if you can, forward or post it in the uh, in the book club group. I'll make sure that gets on the list of the next thing, one of the next books to read. My file for it is very extra large, so I need to give you a link to okay. it in a Dropbox. And it's a little hard to read, but if, you know. Do you have, do you have my Facebook? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just message it to me in there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so book sharing is definitely encouraged <laughs> amongst everybody. And if anybody's, if anybody else wants to start doing this and hold a meeting throughout the week you know when i get home in the evenings i work with my uncle my slash trustee and we work for a couple of hours on trust stuff and then i'm home alone with a dog with not much else to do except study and it gets a little boring studying by yourself yeah After you read this little book, I want to discuss it with you a little. Oh, that one that you're sending me? Yes. Okay, absolutely. How many pages is it? I think 111. <laughs> Yo, so my mom's birthday, 111. Hmm. My son's birthday, 1111. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we're both named after John Kennedy, which, by the way, I got to change my display name in here. Hey, John. What's up? Hey, so we, this just going to be like our little study group or what? Basically, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be reading the book. If anybody, and there's a reason why I'm sharing it up on the screen. If anybody else wants to read, you're welcome to read. Because um, it gets hard going for, you know, anywhere from two to four hours. Like tonight's only going to be two hours because I got a meeting at nine. Um, but... 
you know, it's, 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 I want to encourage participation because the more people get involved, the more people participate and the more active it is, the more other people will want to join and that, and that partic that participation will breed. Right. Right. You know? Okay. So, all right, I'm giving everybody like two more minutes. And then we'll start the ceremony to kick it off, and then we'll start reading. If anybody partakes in the ganja, if you've seen my first videos, I'm, or my first video, the second one hasn't been posted yet because I got to do some editing. But, um, I always start off with a, Thank you to the ancestors, to the gods, and to my parents and my family. And then, um, obviously, everybody here. And I light an incense, and then we spark a bowl. Because I ain't trying to have no negativity up in here, you know what I'm saying? Come on, Russ, click the link. All right, my trustee is on his way, so he said to just go ahead and get started. So without further ado, spark this dragon's blood incense. Thank you to the gods. Thank you to the ancestors. Thank you to my family. Thank you to everybody that has joined us here today. I appreciate you. We can't do this alone. If we aren't together on this, we aren't going to get anywhere at all. So this whole bullshit idea of people got to be independent and independent women and independent men and codependency is a disease, a mental disease, whatever you want to call it. That's bullshit. Without each other, we are nothing. There's a reason why this is stronger than this. That being said, peace to the gods. Let's blaze. Find what page we're on here. <coughs> table of contents, table of contents. Y'all are going to end up seeing my socks up in this piece. My bad, y'all, but I was in a rush trying to get these pictures out. I ended up having to stay late at work.
Chapter 1. Scope of Article 9, Basic Terminology and Basic Concepts. The operative statute governing liens and personal property is Article 9 of the Uniform Commercial Code, the UCC. Article, <clears throat> Article 9 applies to tangible, quasi-tangible, and intangible personal property. From equipment and inventory to promissory notes and, ele and electronic chattel paper. Article 9 has its origins in the Industrial Revolution. Before the Industrial Revolution, one could not pledge personal property as collateral. Pledging per personal property was even a crime. With the Industrial Revolution, it became apparent. Sorry, lost my spot. It became apparent industry required more alternatives for financing. Various forms of personal property liens, such as the such as the pledge and chattel mortgage, developed. Originally proposed by the drafters in 1952 and now adopted by all states in the District of Columbia, and in, in some form, Article 9 of the UCC brought uniformity to the patchwork of common law personal property lien laws. Substantially revised several times since its original enactment, Article 9 seeks to facilitate financial transactions by fostering predictability. Article 9 endeavors to simplify the law, create transparency, and remove impediments to the initial secured finan fin sorry, financings, as well as secondary markets and securitizations. Article 9 includes a few types of personal property and transactions one might not expect to be governed by Article 9. Some of the more unusual categories of personal property included and excluded from Article 9 are listed below. Personal property included under Article 9, subsection I. Assignments for the benefit of creditors. A security interest and the initial assignment for the benefit of creditors along with subsequent transfers by the transferee. UCC subsection 9-309, subsection 12. Consignments. Most consignments are now treated under Article 9 like a purchase, like a purchase money security interest, PMSI which will be discussed more fully below. UCC subsection 9-109A, subsection four. There are still, however, three categories of consignments exempt from the Article 9. One, consumer goods consigned to a merchant. Two, consignments totaling under 1,000 each. And three, oh, hang on, we got someone coming in. And three, goods delivered to a merchant generally known by its creditors to be substantially engaged in selling the goods of others. Practice tip, and this is why I love this book. As discussed more fully below, while true consignments do not require a written security agreement under Article 9, they do require the filing of a financing statement. Because it's often difficult to determine with certainty whether a transaction will be deemed a true consignment, it's advisable that the practitioner, out of an abundance of caution, comply with the security agreement and filing. What's going on here? Something's not working right. You guys still getting me? Yes. Yeah, I got you. Okay, all right. Yep. Everybody mute yourselves, please. But if at any point you lose me, please, like, try to let me know as soon as possible. Because when they cut me off last night, um, or the night before, or was it last night? No, when they cut me off Wednesday night, um, I didn't know it for almost half the chapter. So we lost out on, like, half an hour of time, and I had to go back and start over. <clears throat> So if, if anything happens and I get, and I go out and you guys are talking on me here and you don't get, please hit me on Facebook or something so that it comes through on my phone. Okay. <clears throat> now, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the stuff down below, the more intricate 
I'm just going to stay with what's listed and move on to the, the chapter. <clears throat> so I'll start that part over again. Because it's often difficult to determine with certainty whether a transaction will be, a deem be deemed a true consignment, it's advisable that the practitioner, out of an, ab uh, an abundance of caution, wow, comply with the security agreement and filing requirements of Article 9. Article 9 expressly provides that filing a UCC-1 is not an admission that a transaction is not a consignment. Commercial tort claims. A limited category of commercial tort claims fall under Article 9. This category includes only business claims arising in tort. It does not include claims for damages arising out of personal injury or death. And yet, we could use it for such as our legal name would be the business. So, yeah, fuck you, UCC. Healthcare insurance receivables. Claims under an insurance policy are generally excluded from Article 9, except to the extent that they are proceeds of other collateral. Healthcare insurance receivables are an exception. UCC subsection 9 109D subsection 8 and 9 102 subsection 2 and 9 102 subsection 46. Letter of credit rights. Article 9 applies to the right of payment and performance under a letter of credit. Article 9, however, specifically excludes the right of a beneficiary to demand payment or performance under, the, under a letter of credit. This subject is governed by Article 5 of the UCC. Non-possessory statute, statutory agricultural liens. As discussed more fully below, Article 9 is generally limited to, cons to consensual liens and excludes involuntary statutory liens such as garage keepers and landlords liens. So I will scroll down now again. So all the files for this week will be uploaded on Sunday and that will be the um, ongoing trend is every Sunday because I'll have Sunday mornings free. So Sunday morning, I'll do all the editing and uploading and then Sunday evening will be the uh, trust administration book. <clears throat> Article nine does however, apply to non-possessory statutory agricultural liens, UCC subsection nine dash one Oh nine a subsection two. Public finance trans transactions. Government created security interests are included within Article 9 unless specifically preempted by a state statute that governs creation, perfection, priority, and prosecution of the security interest. UCC subsection 9 109, subsection C, subsection 2. Sales of accounts, Chattel paper, payment intangibles, or promissory notes. This aspect of, of Article 9 is counterintuitive. Article 9 is not limited to a pledge of accounts, chattel paper, payments, intangibles, or promissory notes as collateral, but also includes an outright purchase and sale of these types of collateral, UCC subsection 9-109, subsection A, subsection 3. Note, payment intangibles and promissory notes are subcategories of general intangibles and instruments, respectively. Article 9 does not apply to sales of general intangibles, other than payment intangibles. These sales are governed by common law. Article 9 does not apply to sales in, of instruments other than promissory notes. These sales are governed by Article 3 and the common law. Security interest arising, out of, arising under Articles 2, 2A, 4, and 5 of the UCC. An Article 2 sales security interest arising under UCC subsection 2-401 when a security interest is created by a sale subject to a reser reservation of title. An Article 2 sales security interest granted under UCC subsection 2-711 subsection 3 to an aggrieved buyer upon rejection of goods. Article 2A, lease security interest granted under UCC subsection 2A-508 subsection 5 to an aggrieved leasee upon rejection of goods. Article 4, security interest 
of a collecting bank under UCC subsection 4-210 and Article 5, security interest granted under UCC subsection 5-118 to an issuer or nominated person in a letter of credit and proceeds. Software. Software is a subcategory of general intangibles. UCC subject, subsection 9-102, section 42. Supporting obligation, guarantees, letters of credit, and other supporting obligations of debt, i.e. chattel paper or promissory notes, are generally automatically included when the debt is pledged. See UCC subsection 9-203, 9-308, section D. Personal property excluded from Article 9. Despite its breadth, there are many personal property liens excluded from Article 9, at least in part. Additionally, in certain cases, Article 9 defers to a specific state or federal law for perfection and priority issues, but may still apply in whole or in part to the enforcement of liens. Below are the major categories of personal property liens excluded from Article 9 in whole or in part. Non-consensual liens. Article 9 generally governs only non-consensual liens, thus involuntary liens such as garage keepers' liens, landlords' liens, and liens in favor of suppliers of services or materials, with the exception of non-promissory agricultural liens, are beyond the scope of Article 9. Oh, and also feel free to chime in when I get past the area that's being shown on the screen um, so that I can scroll it down. <clears throat> Article 9 general <clears throat> generally provides that these involuntary possessory liens will have priority over Article 9 liens unless they are created by statute and the statute gives priority to Article 9 liens. This provision reflects the policy that liens securing work or services that enhance or preserve collateral should take priority. Article 9 generally defers to, a, to state law regarding perfection, priority, and enforcement of involuntary liens. Personal property liens specifically addressed by federal or state law. Article 9 does not apply to the extent <clears throat> it, is to su it is superseded by state or federal laws addressed to specific types of collateral. The primary personal property that falls into this category is titled motor vehicles, airplanes, rail cars, vessels, and intellectual property. Every state has a title law governing motor vehicles that, have, that are registered in and driven over the roads in that state. These state title statutes generally require all vehicles that drive over the roads to be registered and titled and that all liens on such vehicles be recorded typically on the title, title itself. As for commercial trucks operating under an ICC permit, federal law defers to the state certificate of title laws. State laws, and other than Article 9, can also govern perfection of the liens in boats, and federal law governs rail cars and many vessels and airplanes. <clears throat> Copyrights, trademarks, and patents are also all governed, at least to some extent, by federal law. These federal statutes, however, often address only perfection of liens, but not priority or enforcement, in which case Article 9 fills in the gaps and applies to the extent it does not conflict with the federal law. A secured party may generally enlist some of Article 9 provisions, such as Article 9 self-help provisions, although a federal law governs perfection requests. A federal activation act, or sorry, aviation act, <clears throat> sorry, the Federal Aviation Act, 1958, governs perfection of a security interest in airplane engines and propellers and airplanes. A secured party must file a notice in security interest with the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, aircraft registry to perfect its lien. The Federal Commission, sorry, vessels, the Federal Commercial Instruments and Maritime Lien Law govern the perfection of security interests in documented vessels. A secured party needs to file a preferred ship mortgage with the National Vessel Documentation Center. A floating home, however, is not a vessel. That is kind of cool. So even if it's a boat, as long as you're living in it, you can call it a floating home, and then you don't have to register it. Bam!
Mika, hush. Go lay down. You're ruining the meeting. Go. Go. Thank you. Hey. She's getting mouthy. The ice. Oh, wait. I got to change pages, don't I? The ICC Termination Act of 1995 governs the perfection of security interests in all railroad cars, locomotives, and other railroad rolling stock. Perfection is affected by filling, filing a security agreement or memorandum with the Surface Transportation Board in Washington, D.C. Intellectual property. Case law generally provides that patents, trademarks, and unregistered copyrights are governed by Article 9. Patents. Trademarks and unregistered copyrights are general intangibles under Article 9. Perfecting a security interest in general intangibles is addressed in the perfecting a security interest section below, but as discussed below, the security party, secured party usually should make a filing at the federal level as well. Copyrights. Pursuant to the Copyright Act of 1976, secured parties in registered copyrights must file a security agreement or a note of, on a mem memorandum in the U.S. Copyright Office, the secured party would be wise to file an Article 9 financing statement as well as noted above. Unregistered copyrights are governed by Article 9. <clears throat> so even if it's not registered, it's governed. So all right. Trademarks. The Lanham Act, like the Patent Act referenced below, generally requires filings at the federal level for transfers of ownership. In the case of trademarks, the secured the secured party should, however, file an assignment with the Commissioner of Patents and the Trademarks, as well as Article 9 financing statement. <clears throat> Patent Act, like the, Lan like the Lanham Act, arguably only requires filings at the federal level for transfers of ownership. In the case of patents, the secured party should, however, file a con conditional assignment with the Commissioner of Patents and Trademarks, as well as an Article 9 financing statement. In summary, in the case of unregistered copyrights, trademarks, and patents, a filed financing statement should protect the secured party from a subsequent trustee and most creditors. But federal filings are advisable, except in the case of an unregistered copyright, out of an abundance of caution and to protect against bona fide purchasers without knowledge of the lien. In short, if the collateral rolls over, the, road, the roads or rails, flies, floats, or the intellectual property, is often not governed. It is often not governed exclusively by Article Nine. At least for lean perfection and priority issues. Rather, Article Nine governs only to the extent it is not pretempted. Page is good. Equipment leases. Article 9 does not apply to equipment leases. These are governed by Article 2A. Except for the extent that the equipment leases themselves, do I have anybody coming in? Nope. Themselves are pledged as collateral, in which case they are the Chattel paper under Article 9. Under Article 2A, true leases do not require lien perfection because the obligor ha has no ownership interest in the equipment. Equipment leases must be carefully reviewed. However, before concluding, there are no lien perfection issues. If the lease is not a true lease under applicable law, but is a lease intended, by, as, intended as a security, the liens must be perfected because a lease intended as security is governed by Article 9 and not Article 2A. The enactment of Article 2A was designed primarily to address the multi-billion dollar equipment finance leasing industry which does not fit neatly under Article 2, sale of goods, or Article 9, secured transactions. Generally, true lease leases are governed under and by Article 2A, and leases intended as a security are governed by Article 9 for perfection, default, and remedies, and Article 2 for warranties. UCC subsection 1-201, 
Section 37, which was amended simultaneously with the enactment of Article 2A, has eliminated most of the ver- vagaries, disputes, and inconsistencies throughout the true lease issue. Section 1201, Section 37 is often referred to as the bright line test. The bright line test introduces a two-step test to determine whether an equipment lease is a true lease or a lease intended as a security. The test is, is, dis, is disjunctive. A lease must satisfy one of two requirements to be deemed a true lease. The first prong of the test considers whether the, the lessee may terminate the payment obligations under the lease before termination of the lease. Most three-party equipment finance leases will not satisfy this requirement since they provide for unconditional non-terminable obligations and indeed often contain hell or high water provisions precisely to eliminate the lessee's right of termination. The second prong of the test pertains to the residual interest under the transaction. It is an economic test that generally provides that the lessor retains a meaningful value in the leased equipment at the end of the lease term. The transaction is a true lease. In contrast, if the lessor does not retain meaningful rights of interest, or sorry, retain a meaningful interest, such as when the lessee can acquire the collateral for $1 or other nominal sum, or when the leased equipment will have little or no value at the end of the term, the transaction will not be deemed a true lease. In determining whether a transaction doc- whether the transaction documents constitute a true equipment lease or a lease intended as security, courts generally will not rely on how the parties styled the documents since the intent of the parties is not relevant, but will instead examine the economics of the transaction. In a nutshell, if the obligor is acquiring equity in the collateral over the course of the transaction, the courts will generally regard the, regard the transaction as a lease intended as a security and not a true lease. In contrast, if the obligor is not acquiring equity over the life of the transaction, the court will generally view the transaction as a true lease. The most significant factor weighed by the courts in determining whether a transaction is a true lease or a lease intended as a security is whether the not, whether there is a nominal option or other side agreement providing the lessee with the right to acquire the collateral at the conclusion of the term for less than the fair market value. But courts may find that the transaction is not a true lease, even when the collateral's economic life substantially exceeds the term of the lease and the lessees do not have the nominal purchase option. If the economic realities are such that the lessor is highly unlikely to seek turnover of the collateral at the conclusion of the lease term, this economic, this economic realities test has become quite, um, quite popular in recent years. An option is usually, I'm sorry, An option, which is really a put or an obligation of the lessee to to buy the leased equipment at the end of the lease with the lessee obligated to pay any shortfall in the base price and to keep any surplus will often be held to be a lease intended as a security. Under section 1-201 subsection 37, the courts may examine other factors, including whether the collateral has any meaningful value at, at the conclusion of the term. make sure that you guys can get a bit of every part of this. I mean, you're going to get all the individual pictures, but still. Whether the lease term exhausts the useful life of the collateral and whether the lessee can exercise a nominal extension of the lease for the economic life of the collateral. Terminal rental adjustment clause track leases are, a, are hybrid transactions that can be very challenging to classify, especially since they can often be viewed as a putt. To be fortunately for track lessors, m- many states have passed track legislation. Courts are split, however, on interpreting le- this legislation. Some courts take the view that the legislation requires track leases to be deemed true leases, while others take the position that track statutes only prohibit track leases from being automatically deemed non-true leases, but still require a court to conduct the full true lease analysis. Practice tip. It is often difficult to determine with certainty whether whether a transaction will be deemed a true lease. 
Accordingly, it is advisable that the pr practitioner, out of abundance of caution, comply with Article 9. Article 9 expressly provides that filing a UCC-1 is not an admission that a transaction is secured. Miscellaneous exempt personal property. Additional specific personal property excluded from Article 9 includes wages, an, ass an assignment of claim for wages, salary, or other compensation of an employee, UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 3. Note, this exclusion is limited to wages or other employee compensation. Thus, an independent contractor may create an Article 9 security interest for monies due to the independent contractor. Sale of business, a sale of accounts, chattel paper, payment intangibles, or promissory notes as part of the sale of business out of which they arose, UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 4. Assignment for the collection only as assignment of accounts, chattel paper, payments intangibles, or promissory notes that this, <clears throat> sorry, assignments for collection only, an assignment of accounts, chattel paper, payment intangibles, or promissory notes that is for the purpose of collection only. UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 5. Performing party. An assignment of a right to payment under, under contract to an assignee that, also, that is also obligated to perform under the contract. UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 6. Limited assignment and satisfaction of debt. An assignment of a single account, payment intangible, or promissory note to an assignee in full or partial satisfaction of a pre-existing pre indebtedness, UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 7. Insurance policy claim other than health care receivables. A transfer of an interest in or an assignment of a claim under a policy of insurance other than, the, than an assignment by or to a health care provider of a health care insurance receivable and any subsequent assignment of the right to payment. UCC subsection 9-109 subsection D subsection 8. UCC subsection, subsection 9-315 and 9-322. Sorry, subsection 9-315 and 9-322 may apply to any insurance that proceeds and prioritizes in proceeds of other collateral. How we doing guys, you good over there? Good. Oh yeah. Practice tip. Yeah. yeah. Practice tip. Generally under, <laughs> son of a bitch. Generally under Article Nine, the under Article Nine law, the secured party must provide an insurance company with an assignment of insurance. Consult the insurance company for its approved forms. Some states may also require that the secured party take possession of the policy to perfect a security interest. It is advisable that the loan documents include a provision that the secured party may use the insurance monies to pay down the debt even if the debtor is not in the default at that time. Also, a secured party may be added to the insurance as a lost payee. If the secured party is not named as a lost payee, it should, it should comply with UCC subsection 9-315 and 9-322 to ensure perfection in the proceeds and in the hands of the debtor. Some states and some insurance policies have notice requirements. It is a best practice for the secured party to send a notice of assignments. Judgments. An assignment of a right represented by a judgment unless the judgment was taken on a right to payment that was collateral, such as an account, UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 9. Make sure I'm down so when I get over there. Practice tip. Generally, under common law, the secured party should obtain a written assignment, file it with the court, and if possible, notify the judgment debtors. I'm going to read that again. Generally, under the common law, the secured party should obtain a written assignment, file it with the court, and if possible, notify the judgment debtors. Recoupment or set-off rights. 
a right of recoupment or set off except UCC subsection 9-340 applies with respect to the effectiveness of rights of recoupment or set off against deposit accounts and UCC subsection 9-404 applies with respect to defenses or claims of an account debtor accountant yeah account debtor UCC subsection 9-109 subsection D subsection 10 A and B Sorry, I'm, I'm reading and like my eyes are going faster than my voice is going and I'm getting stuck. <laughs> interest in real property, the creation or transfer of an interest in lien on real property, including a lease or rents there under. Where are we at? Am I still there? Okay. There under except to the extent that provision is made for. I'll read that again because I wanted to make sure we were in the right spot. Interest in real property, the creation or transfer of an interest in a, in a lien on real property, including a lease or rents there under, except to the extent that this, that provision is made for. Liens on real property in UCC subsection 9-203, automatic attachment and supporting obligations, such as an LLC or guarantee in supporting liens, such as a mortgage and subsection 9-308 Dash 308, subsection D, automatic perfection. All right, that was split up between the page, so I'm going to read that again. Liens on real property in UCC subsection 9-203, automatic attachment and supporting obligations, such as an LLC or guarantee, and in the supporting liens, such as a mortgage, and subsection 9-308, subsection D, automatic perfection. Practice tip. Two important concepts must be noted in connection with promissory notes and mortgages. First, the mortgage follows the note. Second, because the mortgage follows the note, Article 9 trumps real estate mortgage law regarding the priority of liens in mortgages. Thus, where a note and mortgage were double pledged and a creditor and a and creditor a perfected under Article and creditor A perfected under Article 9 by taking possession of the original note and filing a UCC-1 and creditor B perfected by filing a notice of assignment of the mortgage in real property deeds, creditor A has, a prior, has priority in the note and mortgage. Accordingly, when taking a lien in a note and mortgage perfection under Article 9 is paramount, even though the mortgage is clearly is an interest in real property. That's a really important one, so I'm going to read that again. Two important concepts must be noted in connection with promissory notes and mortgages. First, the mortgage follows the note. Second, because the mortgage follows the note, Article 9 trumps real estate mortgage law regarding priority of liens in mortgages. Thus, where a note and mortgage were double-pledged and creditor A perfected under Article 9 by taking possession of the original note and filing a UCC-1, and creditor B perfected by filing a notice of the assignment of the mortgage in the real property records, creditor A has priority in the note and mortgage accordingly when taking a lien in a note and mortgage perfection under Article 9 is paramount, even though the mortgage clearly is an interest in real property. That's a good one. Fixtures in UCC, in UCC subsection 9-334. Fixtures filings in UCC subsection 9-501, 9-502, 9-516, and 9-519, and security agreements covering personal and real property in UCC subsection 9-604, 9-109 subsection D, subsection 11, A, and A through D, Non-commercial tort claim. As an assignment of a claim arising in tort, other than a commercial tort claim, except for except that UCC subsection 9-315 and subsection 9-312 apply with respect to proceeds and priorities and proceeds, UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 12, note, when a tort claim settles and becomes contractual obligation, it is covered by Article 9 as a payment intangible. UCC subsection 9-102, subsection 61. Consumer deposit accounts. 
an assignment of deposit account in a consumer transaction, but UCC subsection 9-135 and 9322 apply with respect to proceeds and priorities and proceeds. UCC subsection 9-109, subsection D, subsection 13. Article 9 does not preclude security in interest in consumer deposit accounts, but this area is governed by common law. Practice tip. Generally, under applicable common law, the secured party should have the debtor assign the account in a written security agreement. The debtor should not have any control or access, and there should be notice to the bank. The bank should also agree that it will not remit any funds to the debtor without the secured party's consent, that it will remit the funds to the secured party upon default and requests that it subordinates any security interest or set-off rights it has or may have. State as debtor. Security interests granted by a state or state agency are governed by Article 9 in the absence of a statute providing otherwise. Many states have, however, adopted non-uniform provisions of Article 9, which exclude security interests granted by the state or state agencies from Article 9, UCC, subsection 9-109, subsection A, subsection 1. This exemption should be limited to transactions where the state is the debtor, and Article 9 should, should still apply where the state is the secured party. <clears throat> Non-code legislation. Under UCC subsection 9-201B, a state can identify all statutes that continue to apply to Article 9 transactions, although Article 9 appears to or purports to supersede such statutes. The statutes specified typically apply to small loan accounts, retail motor vehicle installment accounts, and consumer issues, and are not repealed by Article 9, of course. Federal legislation like Truth in Lending Act, Regulations M and Z, and the Fair Debt Collections Act 15 U.S.C. subsection 1692 also apply alongside Article 9. Additionally, unless specifically pre precluded by Article 9, general pr principles of law and equity still apply, including fraud, misrepresentation, and unconscionability. Key terminology. Secured party means A, a person who's in whose favor a security interest is created or provided under a security agreement, whether or not any obligation to be secured is outstanding. B, a person that holds an agricultural lien, a cosigner, sorry, C, a cosigner. D, a person to which accounts, chattel paper, payments, intangibles, or promissory notes have been sold. E, a trustee, indenture trustee, agent, collateral agent, or other representative in whose favor a security interest or agricultural lien is created or provided for or F, a person that holds a security interest arising under UCC subsection 2-401, subsection 2-505, subsection 2-711, subsection 3, and 2A-508, subsection 5, and subsection 4-210, or 5-118. Debtor means A a person having an interest other than a security interest or other lien in the collateral, whether or not the person is an obligor, B, a seller of accounts, chattel paper, payment intangibles, or promissory notes, or C, cosignee. <clears throat> obligor means a person that, with respect to obligation to an obligation secured by a security interest in or an agricultural lien on the collateral, owes payment for, or other performance of, of the obligation has provided property other than the collateral to secure the payment or other performance of the obligation or otherwise is accountable in whole or in part for payment or other performance of the obligation. The term does not include issuers or nominated persons under letter of credit. Secondary obligor means an obligor to the extent that a, the obligor's obligation Hang on, let me scroll down. The obligor's obligation is secondary, or B, the ob obligor has a right of recourse with 
Oh, that one came out horrible. My bad, y'all. The further I got into the book, the harder it got to get it to stay flat. And I don't really want to tear the book apart, but I'm thinking I might just do that and then just staple it back together. With respect to an obligation secured by collateral against the debtor, another obligor, or property of either. Account debtor means a personal obligated on a means a person obligated on an account, chattel paper, or general intangible. This this term does not include or sorry, the term does not include persons obligated to pay a negotiable instrument, even if the instrument constitutes part of chattel paper. Hmm. Collateral means the property of the property subject to a security interest or agricultural lien. The term includes A, proceeds to which a security interest attaches, B, accounts, chattel paper, payment intangibles, and promissory notes that have been sold, and C, goods that are subject that are the subject of a consignment. Security agreement means an agreement that creates or provides for a security interest. Financing statement means a record or records consisting of an initial financing statement and any filed record relating to the initial financing statement. Authenticate means A, to sign, or B, to execute or otherwise adopt a symbol or encrypt or similarly process a record in whole or in part with the present intent of the authenticating person to identify the person and adopt or accept a record. Communicate means A. Can, can we scroll down a little bit? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. I'll do that again. Authenticate means A. John, I'm going to... Go ahead. I'm going to be leaving the meeting, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, all right. I'll see you tomorrow. Night, all. Um, where was I? Authenticate. Okay. Authenticate means A, to sign, or B, to execute, or otherwise. What time are we at? I gotta find out what time we're at here. You don't want to play? All right, we got an hour. We could do this. We could do this. All right. Authenticate means A, to sign, or B, to execute or otherwise adopt a symbol or encrypt or similarly process a record in whole or in part with the present intent of the authenticating person to identify the person and adopt or accept a record. Communicate means A, to send written or other tangible record, B, to transmit a record by any means agreed upon, by the person sending and receiving the record, or C, in the case of transmissions of a record or by a filing office, to transmit a record by any means prescribed by filing office rule. Yeah, I was trying something different with these two and it didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Excuse me. Practice tip. Incorporate the definition of communicate into standard loan documents. Avoid sending foreclosure notices electronically, especially in consumer cases. Although this process is approved in the 2010 amendments to Article 9, the 2010 amendments. <clears throat> Note. Under Article 9, the debtor and the obligor are not necessarily the same person. This distinction can significantly affect issues of attachment, default, and foreclosure. Note. The definitions of authenticate and communicate provide for electronic acceptance or acknowledgement of a record in lieu of personal signature and for electronic transmission of communication. Scroll down now just to. Oh, yeah. Important basic concepts, general. 
a good faith. The UCC requires honesty in fact and the observance of reasonable commercial standards of fair dealing. This requirement applies to Article 9 transaction and appears throughout UCC generously. Too bad it doesn't appear throughout the people that are supposed to enforce it. Official comments. The official comments to Article 9 do not have the probative value of legislative history since many legislators may not have reviewed the official comments when they considered Article 9, especially when the states have adopted non-uniform sections. Some states, however, may have included legislative committee comments. These comments should be treated like any other legislative history. For the sake of the video, people will think we need to pause it or whatever. All right. <clears throat> free alienability purported reservations of title by seller one of the primary goals of article 9 is to encourage the pledge securitization and transfer of secured debt accordingly article 9 takes specific aim at contractual provisions and laws that attempt to limit the granting of security interests in or the sale or in or the sale or transfer of secure transactions. Consistent with this policy, an attempt by a seller in an installment sale document to retain title until paid in full is unenforceable and is instead deemed to be only a reserv reservation of a security interest. UCC subsection sections 9-401, 9-406, and 9-408 limits on restrictions that might otherwise impede article 9 ucc subsection 9-401 subsection b provides as follows agreement does not prevent transfer an agreement between the debtor and secured party which prohibits a transfer of the debtor's rights in collateral or makes the transfer of default transfer or makes the transfer a default does not prevent the transfer from taking effect this section makes abundantly clear that the debtor's interest in the collateral may be disposed of or reached by other creditors, despite a contractual provision purporting to preclude a transfer, unlike subsection 9-406 and 9-408 discussed below. Subsection 9-401 does not preclude a clause that, that makes the grant of a lien or transfer an event or default. It only precludes contractual provisions that invalidate the pledge or sale. UCC subsection 9-406, subsection D, deals with accounts except healthcare insurance receivables and chattel paper, whether pledged as collateral or sold, and with payment intangibles and promissory notes, to the extent that they are pledged as collateral but are not subject of sales, subsection not, or sorry, section 9-406, subsection D, invalidates contractual provisions that restrict or limit liens or sales on accounts and chattel paper only by prohibiting them, requiring consent, or that classify them as defaults under the, under the agreement. UCC subsection 9-406F does not, for laws that restrict or limit liens or sale the same thing as UCC 9-406D, does not, does for contractual provisions except that UCC subsection 9-406F is limited to accounts and chattel paper and excludes leased goods. UCC subsection 2A-303 and 9-407. UCC 9-408A applies to contract provisions relating to healthcare receivables and general intangibles, pledged as collateral or sold, and to sales of promissory notes and, payments and, and payment intangibles. UCC subsection 9-408 provides that, in, that it includes but not, is not limited to contract, permit, license, or franchisee. UCC subsection 408 subsection C applies to all laws relating to healthcare receivables, receivables, promissory notes, and general intangibles pledged as collateral or sold like subsection 9-406, subsection 9-408 prohibits contractual provisions and laws that limit the creation, attachment, or perfection of the security interest or sale that characterize the transfer as D 
default or breach, UCC subsection 9-408A and C. Section 9-408 deals with enforcement issues very dif differently, however, from Section 9-406. Generally, 9-408 does not interfere with an otherwise. Oh. We might be able to get through chapter two before nine. Maybe not. Effective restriction in, con in contract or under law on the secured party's part, on the secured party's or buyer's ability to enforce its security interest or purchase interest under subsection 9-408 subsection D, any security interest created under 9-408 A and E, despite a contractual provision or law otherwise, will have very limited enforceability as a security interest. Subsection 9-408D provides, to the extent that, the, that a term in a promissory note or in an agreement between an account debtor and a, and a debtor which relates to health care insurance, receivable or general intangible or rule of law, statute or regulation describes in subsection C, <clears throat> in sub, okay, in subsection, wait, hang on, let me make sure I'm reading that right. To the extent that a term in a promissory note or in an agreement between an account debtor and a debtor which relates to a health care insurance receivable or general intangible or a rule of law, statute, or regulation described in subsection C would be effective under law other than this article but is ineffective under subsection A or C, the creation, attachment, or perfection of a security interest in the promissory note healthcare insurance receivables or general intangible is not enforceable against the person obligated on the promissory note or the account debtor. Sorry. One is not enforceable against the person obligated on the promissory note or the account debtor. Two does not impose a duty or obligation upon the person obligated on the promissory note or the account debtor. Three does not require the person obligated on the promissory note or the account debtor to recognize the security interest, pay or render the performance to the secured party, or accept payment of performance from the secured party. Four, does not entitle the secured party to use or assign the debtor's rights under the promissory note, health care insurance receivable or general intangible, including any related information of, or materials furnished to the debtor in the transaction, giving rise to the promissory note, health care insurance receivable or general intangible. Five, does not entitle the security part, secured party to use, assign, possess, or have access to any trade secrets or confidential information of the person obligated on the promissory note or the account debtor. We, and we need to scroll up, brother. Sorry. Thank you. Should I read five again or are you good? No, five is good. You can go to six. Okay, all right does not entitle the secured party to enforce a security interest in the promissory note, health care insurance receivable, or a general intangible. Section 9-408 often comes into play with licenses such as software and liquor licenses. In such case, a contract provision or, or law pro prohibiting the license from pledging the license, sorry, prohibiting the licensee from pledging the license as collateral is not enforceable, but the secured party may not enforce the security interest without the permission of the owner. Note, Section 9-409 has similar provisions for letters of credit. Note, Section 9-406 governs ple pledges of promissory notes and payments intangibles, and subsection 9-408 applies to the sales of this collateral. Thus, in the event of sales of promissory notes and payment intangibles, an account debtor or maker does not have to recognize the buyer. The 2010 amendments clarify that a sale or other disposition of collateral under 9-601 sorry, 9-610, secured party sale, or under 9-620, acceptance of collateral by a secured party in satisfaction of debt, 
is governed by 9-406 and not 9-408. These are all subsections in case anybody's listening to this and not getting the video because I know some people might be shysty and hop up on YouTube and bring it over to Q Downloader. And Well, everybody should be bringing it to Q Downloader anyway just to get it the hell off the internet so we have it. But So, yeah. <clears throat> Where was I? Note one, United States receivables. The secured party may perfect its lien under Article 9, but may not collect directly from the federal government unless it complies with the Assignment Claims Assignment of Claims Act of 1940. Compliance is a difficult process, and even if the secured party does not does comply, the government retains all rights of set off and recoupment. Unless there has been compliance by the secured party, the government has no obligation to pay the secured party. However, the secured party is perfected in the receivables. Pick your partner laws. Two, pick your partner laws. The free alienability provisions generally do not conflict with the various state pick your partner laws and provisions. The free alienability provisions are designed to permit free alienability of economic rights, not governance rights. Moreover, an ownership interest in an LLC is a general intangible and Article 9 does not apply to the sale of general intangibles, but only to the sale of payment intangibles. Nevertheless, some states, such as Delaware and Virginia, have enacted provisions that make subsection 9-406 and 9-408 alienability restrictions inapplicable on ownership and governance rights of partnerships and limited liability companies. Man. Limits on liability. A secured party has no liability to third parties. Consistent with Article 9's policy of encouraging transactions, UCC subsection 9-402 provides that a secured party will not be liable to third party. Get down as low as I can here. Oh, this is going to be a short page anyway. I lost my page. What are we on? There we go. Subsection 9402 provides that the secured party will not be liable to third parties for the debtor's acts or omissions, whether the claims sound in contract or in tort. Whether the claims sound in contract or in tort. Okay. This section applies to agricultural liens as well. B, waiver of defenses by account holders. Again, consistent with Article 9's policies of facilitating the sale and assignment of secured transactions, UCC subsection 9-403 provides that an account debtor may waive and agree not to assert any assignee and any defenses that the account debtor may have against the original secured party or assigner. This provision is only applicable, however, when the assignee takes the assignment. One, for value in good faith without notice of a claim of, of a property or possessory right to the property assigned without notice of a claim in recoupment of the type that may be asserted against a person entitled to enforce a negotiable instrument under section 3-305B. This provision parallels the holder in due course doctrine of article three defenses that are permissible against the holder in due course under, under subsection 3-305 subsection B continue to apply. The ambit of subsection 9-403 is limited to non-consumer transactions. Legislation that provides that an account debtor may assert defenses against the assignee in consumer transactions continues to apply. For example, the FTC's holder in due course regulations, 16 CFR subsection 433.1 
433.3 provide that consumer credit contracts must include a legend preserving consumer claims and defenses. This provision is deemed applicable even if the legend is not included and the account debtor may assert claims and defenses indeed to the extent any law provides that an account debtor in a consumer transaction may assert all defenses and claims against the assignee, that law trumps subsection 9-403. Limits of claims against assignees by account debtors. Unless waived by the account debtor as provided in subsection 9-403, I'll scroll down here so we can get the rest of the page. Above, an account debtor may assert all claims and defenses against an assignee. The assignee takes subject to all claims and defenses whether they arose before or after the assignment. If the claims or defenses arise from the transaction that gave rise to the contract, which includes the claims, so, so, sorry, which includes the claims sounding in recoupment, the assignee does not. However, take, the, take subject to the other claims or defenses such as set-off claims unless they arose before the assignment. These claims, however, whether they be in the nature of recoupment, set-off, or other, otherwise, may only be asserted to reduce the amount the account debtor owes. These claims are also limited, sorry, these claims also are limited to monetary offsets and may not be employed to defeat a replevin action. Thus, an assignee's maximum exposure is loss of the right to collect the debt. The account debtor does not have the right to an affirmative recovery from an assignee. Oh, did I skip over? And... I did. My bad. Otherwise may only, I'll do it again. Otherwise may only be asserted to reduce the amount the account debtor owes. These claims are also limited to monetary offsets and may not be employed to defeat a replevin action. Thus, an assignee's maxim, maximum exposure is loss of the right to collect the debt. The account debtor does not have the right of, to an affirmative recovery of an assignee from an assignee. Once again, this provision is limited to non-consumer transactions. Because the payer of health care insurance receivables is an insurance company, this section also does not apply to health care insurance receivables. Finally, as noted in official comment 5 to subsection 9-404, the rights and limitations of an account debtor under subsection 9-404 do not apply in a few other cases. <clears throat> Neither this section or any other provisions of this article, including sections 9-408 and 9-409, provides anal <clears throat> analog analogous regulation of the rights and duties of other obligors on collateral, such as the maker of a negotiable instrument governed by Article 3. The issue of a nominated person under a letter of credit gov governed by Article 5, or the issue of issuer of a security governed by Article 8. Article 9 leaves those rights and duties untouched. However, Section 9-409 deals with the special case of letters of credit. When Chattel paper is composed in part, of a in part of a negotiable instrument, the obligor on the instrument is not an account debtor. Article 3 governs the right of an assignee of the Chattel paper with respect to the issues that this section addresses. See e.g. UCC subsection 3-601, dealing with the discharge of an obligation to pay a negotiable instrument. Do I need to zoom that in for you guys at all or anything? If it's too blurry or whatever, too small, just let me know. I can zoom it or whatever I need to do. Thus, in the case of the negotiable instruments, including, negoti including negotiable instruments as part of Chattel paper, subsection 9-403, 9-404, 9-406, and 9-408 do not apply. The term account debtors and thus the 9404 rules also do not apply to the assignment of healthcare receivables and to banks with regard to their rights in deposit accounts. And that's the end of chapter one. So I think we'll call it there and have a little short discussion because I know there's, it's 822 and I got a meeting at nine, so I know there's no way I'm gonna make it through the second chapter.
I would have loved to. Um, if you guys are up for it, I might be down to do chapter two tomorrow after I get out of work. That was fast. <laughs> that was fast. We can keep we can keep going till nine. I have no problem with that. If you guys don't mind chopping up the, the chapter, because I I know I probably won't be able to finish it by nine. I have no preference. Anybody else got a vote? Or do we want to just discuss or what? I I think um It'd be a good time to have a discussion. I mean, I mean, my personal opinion. Okay. All right. So let's uh, start with questions. Do we have any questions on any of the material? Okay. So my my question would be. So what what is the difference between the healthcare account? and a regular account. I know they were saying like accounts receivable. Essentially, there is no difference. Um, especially when you're dealing with like, because you got to remember, you're going to be dealing with indemnity bonds, right? You're going to be making up your own insurance indemnity bonds and you're going to be sending them to these insurance companies. You're going to say, hey, this is my indemnity bond covering me this will control my policy. Um, I haven't, oh. don't, quote me for, don't quote me verbatim on that because I haven't completely studied that process. But from what I understand, that's how it's supposed to go. And from what I'm reading here, it's, a, it's very similar. Like it, so, it sounds like that's along the right lines. Okay, so now, now it makes a little bit more sense to me. So let's say my, my insurance company is uh, Geico, and Geico issues me a policy. They expect me to exchange some Federal Reserve notes in order to cover me, but I can send the CFO of, of, of Geico a personal indemnity bond to ensure uh, 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 me and give other drivers assurance. So if right. there's something that happens, the so there's actually can, go ahead. There's actually a term for what you're for what you're talking about. I can't remember what it is, but a friend of mine used it used it in real estate um, in order to get her dog into property. She would sign she would sign a written agreement. It was some sort of insurance form that added insurance on top of the insurance so that the landlord was no longer liable if anything happened. It's called a rider? I be, yeah, I believe that's it, yeah, yep. So yeah, that, that would totally okay. be feasible. Okay, I mean, I, I, I mean, you know, I came in uh, kind of at the, the, this is my first one. I didn't, I didn't attend the, the other one. Well, I didn't know about the other one. So just just now it makes a little bit more sense, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. And that's uh, what I like about this book cuz no man, those practice tips, bro. Yeah, that that book is pretty awesome. Um like just the way it covers so I just recently went out and uh put 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 a lot of credit on my on my credit, right? But what I did was I I told them, I said, hey, you know, this is for the uh company who's gonna be processing the final payment. And these are some uh, a set of instructions to put this uh uh property in my into my trust. So with that, I gave them a discharging instrument and all that good stuff, UCC3 and all that with it, you know, uh, crossed out their security instrument, uh, security interests and all that good stuff. And, you know, the person just happily go luckily signed the contract. And I was like, you have no idea what you signed it. But I was like, we've done that for 
for it. I know I've been doing it for over 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Signing what I don't know. But now, you know, with the more studying, it makes, it makes you know, it's starting to come together like pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's pretty, I, I, like, like, I like this group. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty amazing. What made you think of it? Man, I had these books, man. I had, I had um, Trust in the State Administration for Dummies for like six months, bro. And I've just been sitting on this trust for two years, bro. I haven't made any progress because me and my uncle had a falling out and, you know, whatever, whatever. But we got back together and reconciled and whatnot. And right. Because, um, you know, I'm, I'm his trustee. Well, I'm not actually his trustee yet, but I'm about to be. Um, he's my trustee. And uh, on top of that, like, we're the only two in the family that are woke. And I, I mean, it's hard being woke, huh? Man, I almost lost my job twice today because I'm woke. Yeah, it's it's hard to play the game, bro. It's hard to play the game, but you know, it just you know, it it just comes with the territory. You know what I'm saying? The more you know, heavy, the heavy, harder it's gonna be. Heavy lies the crown. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. That that was pretty. What what you think, Marie? That was pretty awesome, or what? What's that? I yeah, was it was fast. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty awesome, man. I I mean, I I thank you. I thank you. It's it's good, and it's it's good just to have somebody else to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I feel you on that. I, I be by myself, and then I try to tell like my old lady. I try to tell. My yeah. friends and they just like, uh, whatever, dude. You know, we don't want to hear that. So I, the the cool thing is, is as you progress, the more people see you doing the paperwork, and more people see you making, getting success, and taking the next step, the next step. Like I got people, I got people at work that two months ago alone thought right. I was absolutely fucking nuts. I showed them all my trust paperwork <laughs> and everything. I showed them my trust paperwork. I showed everything I had accepted from the Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of State. I'm like, this is legit, y'all. I think I'm playing. I'm like, it's yeah. going to be a matter of time because I don't know how to administer it yet. I said, but that's coming. And then I started showing them all the stuff that I was want. Once I got that Treasury Direct account, bro, oh, it was over. I showed them that that form from the from the TreasuryDirect.gov, and they was like, huh? Yeah, see, I still don't have one of those yet. You know, I don't, you know, it's that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of new information, but um, I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the TDA accounts. Um, but basically, it's so simple, man. You just go to tdadirect.gov and you apply for an account. They give you the number and then you've got to authenticate who you are before you can get the hard lock removed. That's that process they're talking about. That's so damn difficult is authentication because you ever watched the movie Jupiter ascending? No, I don't, I don't watch TV at all, bro. Good man. (laughs) I I watch it because I see the subliminal messaging now all over the place. And I, and I love picking it out and showing it to people because it's the, it's the best way to do it. You know, somebody you, you, point out a scene in a movie that somebody already knows and they're like what and then you say it's now look at this and then compare and that's one of those movies because the whole movie is about this chick who finds out that she's a reincarnation of a the goddess of earth that owns earth right right and so she's got to go back to this civilization and claim her title as the reoccurrence and they make her go through all these hoops and jumps and whatnot, trying to get the title. Um, right. And and it it's funny because they're like, oh well, you need a tax ID to get the title for them. And they go around looking for a tax ID, and they're like, oh, you need the title to get the tax ID. And they're like, well, we can't. Do, 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 do. So they end up having to bribe them. Exactly what we got to do. You know. Right. What I, mean? I you think gotta, like, I think I saw that in the group. I saw that. that and she was like at a window and they gave her like a little box or something like that. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I, I can't I can't remember the scene. There there might have been a scene like that in there. Right. You know, I, I 
I don't really pay attention to movies, but I know they have like a lot of useful information in them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? These but, days, I'm, especially because they're they're trying to they're trying to disclose a lot. Well, yeah, they're going to they're gonna let you know before they do what they do. Oh, yeah. So so they can stay in honor with the process. But, I, you know, I just got back my um, my uh, uh, my green cards from from the Treasury here. Uh, like yesterday, I went to check my P.O. box, you know. So. I'm working. I'm striving. I'm trying to get there. I'm, I'm, I'll be there in no time. I say yeah. by the end of, end of 2020, I'll be totally secure, know how to operate, run my trust, and all that good stuff. You know, but I, I subscribe to the, uh, to the, uh, 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 I got a membership through SBC uh, University. Yeah, I, I was, I was a part of that joint when before he even started it i was the first group that was in yeah. his his webinars i'm you, mm -hmm. you won't you won't see me you won't hear me in them because he he wouldn't let me on he wouldn't let me ask questions nothing um but i i got i got really jaded with yusuf l on that because i found out through people that actually chill with him and know him that he's not actually using any of these processes and he's he's just pushing processes, you know what I mean? Just like promoting the learning of processes, and that's it. He's not using right. them, he's, so he's not practicing what he preaches. And the other thing was, in in the first set of videos, he promised remedy. He promised showing how to discharge step by step. Right. And I still got it in writing. What? I still got it. I saved the post. So if you ever want to test me. No, you know, I, I, I feel like I feel I look at it like this, right? You know, you can learn something from anybody. You just have to be Absolutely. able to take you gotta, it. You got to pick and choose and bounce out. And, and make it yours, you know. And, yep. I've, and I've, I've seen things. And he said things that's happened to me too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh no, I'm not. I'm not doubting his ability. I'm yeah. not doubting his ability by any means, because the man is knowledge knowledgeable as all hell, and yeah. I know he's been through some shit. I've heard some stories. Yeah. You know, um, I'm just I'm upset at, at, and I do I like man just for the amount of reading material you can get out of the spc university when he first uploaded all that stuff to my dropbox man yeah before that was, and that was before the site was even really up like woo. right uh, I've, I've seen videos where they talk about well it'll be in the dropbox or whatever but you know what that's this is new to me and during the time where i was going through and i was first finding out about it because you know i got into it because something happened, right? I got, I had a foreclosure, right? So that's when I first got into it. Um, but I was learning from a, another dude and he was like, he was really unorthodox. He, he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be making noise and stuff. Oh, he Eon. I don't, I don't remember the dude. It was, um, redress right. That's, that's all I remember. Like, yeah, I know, right. I know who you're talking about. I see Eon. Eon. Yeah. That poor dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think he had, he had went through some stuff too, you know. So yeah, and, you know it, we all but, done went but, through some stuff. You know what I mean? We all done. But you know, the that information that he put out was really good too. One hundred forty-four thousand. Yeah, 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 man, it's crazy. It's crazy. But it's nice to know you, you're not the only one, you know. No, no doubt. So Marie. I think she might have left. What? <laughs> oh, she there. What can you provide? You've read this book a little more in depth than me. What can you provide for, you know, information on this first chapter that we've read and maybe expand a little bit? Or what, what, what do you know maybe about the second chapter that you can drop a little, maybe get everybody excited for next week? Ooh, I don't know. 
I want to listen to this a bunch of times and I want to look up the specific codes or, you know, the articles referenced here. I wrote a lot while you were reading. I, I make, um, I made marks in my books, uh, my books uh, that I could look up more things. It's hard to take all of this in. It is. It's a lot. It's, it's hard to read because I want it to sound good. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to read it consistently Yeah. and I'm running into words that it's, it's not that I necessarily don't know. It's just, I'm not used to reading. Right. Cause you know, I'm not usually reading this kind of content out loud. Um, and I haven't, to be honest, I've, I've, I've been slack and I haven't read in a long, long time. And that was, that was my reason for doing this was, Hey, look, I had one of the, I had this estate and trust for dummies and I watched the, the pedo Lido videos, uh, Peter Joseph. Um, I watched all those videos. Oh, who's oh, my man, Chris is in here. Um, I watched all those videos and in those videos, he showed that same book. He showed this book and, um, he also mentioned that, um, he followed the redemption manual for his first trust. And I followed the redemption manual for my first trust. So that gave me a lot of confidence moving forward. Um, and I'm like, well, you know what? He's recommending the book. I, cause I put the book down at first thinking, you know, it doesn't necessarily apply as far as the SPC goes because it just the way it's written. Um, unless you really, unless you really think about it, you, you don't, you don't really catch how it, how it applies, um, at first. Um, but so I, I just set it down and I was like, ah, you know, I'll come back to it maybe. Um, and, um, then I saw him put that up. And so I was like, well, fuck it. I got to read it me and my uncle were at a standstill he's in a foreclosure and i'm being kept for my son so i gotta read it i might as well read it out loud because i know if i try to read without reading out loud it always puts me to sleep i i, I can't read more than four or five pages without going the night so <laughs> so i was like well fuck it if i'm gonna read out loud i might as well get it on video and put it out for everybody so even even the people that don't have access to the book can get the knowledge and what's big brother gonna do i'm not making any false claims i'm not you know purporting just, to say hey i'm gonna get you money or club. get you rich huh it's just a book club you're just reading a book exactly yeah and you know Facebook want to try and censor me on that, man. I got plenty of other platforms I can go to. Man, that's amazing, bro. That's amazing. I, I'm I'm impressed. I'm gonna tell you, I'm impressed. You know, I I was talking to one of my buddies today, and he was like, "Well, what you gonna do this weekend?" I say, "Well, <clears throat> he he he's, he loves Trump, right?" And I don't tell him, but I kind of like him too, right? But I I never tell him. And I was like, this uh, <laughs> I said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go read. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to show you right now. So I pulled up uh, Michael Cohen's indictment and we went through his indictment. And then I was like, okay, he didn't do. Okay. I say, okay, let's look at Roger Stone. He got a 24 page indictment. So I'm just going to be reading indictments all weekend. <laughs> that actually uh, sounds like a lot of fun. This is a book group, a book club. We talking about reading. That's my daughter, everybody. Hello. Wait, is that a video? Yeah, it's a video. We see you. <laughs> Can you hear? Huh? Say Hi. Hello. 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 All right, now get lost. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, Twan, how you doing, man? Where you at in your process, brother? Bro, I think I'm pretty solid in my process. I've been to, 
I've been to court. I've seen the uh, the impact that it can have in court. Um, I've sent out correspondences. I've seen, but I haven't had a full picture. You know what I'm saying? I I haven't discharged any debt. Um, not saying that I don't think it's possible. I can I can't do it. I mean, I just had to acquire some debt to discharge. Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. Um, and then I saw a question on the group today, and it was like, you know, how can I get rid of my lawyer and tell him his services is no longer needed? I'm sa- and I told him, I said, so this is what I did when I was in court. I had this, I had this lawyer, his name was Mr. Brown, and he was like, uh, are you going to take the deal? And I was like, what's the deal? He was like, oh, you don't know the deal? You're going to uh, plead guilty. You're going to do community service, pay $60 for crime stoppers. You're going to pay uh, $100 a month every year. And I was like, what? We didn't discuss that. So he was like, oh, you want to play dumb? I'm going to play dumb. So he went in the courtroom, and I followed him in there. So he went to the table. I didn't go to the table. I stayed, like, in the audience or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, the judge say, uh, uh, prosecutor, are you ready? And he's like, yes, Your Honor. And then say, defense, are you ready? Say, yes, Your Honor. I said, no, Your Honor. And say, sir, sit down. We're we, we going to get to you. Who are you anyway? And I was like, I'm a defendant. She was like, what? Come come on up here, sir. Come on up here. And she was like, well, what's going on? And I say, well, I'd like to ask the court well, to ask Mr. Brown to recuse himself from my case. And I'd like to ask the court for more time to find an attorney to my liking because I don't think Mr. Brown is working in my best interest. And the judge was like, you know, I don't normally do this, but, you know, Mr. Brown, can you go ahead? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown, can you go ahead and turn in the proper paperwork? And I mean, all the other lawyers, they fell out laughing in the courtroom, you know, but what it was, was it was, it was a DWI case. So the dude in front of me, he had two DWIs. He got off with time served. He only had to pay like $600. Man, they want me to pay like $10,000. I'm like, man, I'm going to fire this dude and I'm going to hire this dude. So when the other dude walked out, I got his card. He was like, I ain't cheap. It don't matter, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so I end up, and this was like my third, he was my third lawyer. So it ended up costing me like five grand, but it all came off my record and all that good stuff. So I already knew, like, it's kind of like, how of course, you they got the money out of you. That's why I came off your record. They're like, oh, yeah. Man, enough. He good. He good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, and, and I remember when I was sitting in there and the judge would call somebody up and be like, okay, you gone. Okay, you gone. Okay, you gone. I was like, man, court can't be like McDonald's. Like, you know, this is a revolving. It's something. It is this like McDonald's, justice. though. Yeah, but that ain't justice. No, nah, they just, they turning them out. They turning them out. The About biggest profits. pimp on the planet right there. Man, I was just like, no, Pim. No, Pim. I, I got to do something better than this. Yo, Blue, where you at with your process, man? Okay, Blue finna be quiet. Chris, how about you? All right, everybody. Marie, where are you at? Uh, pretty much the beginning, just trying to read so I can be competent to know what to do. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, have you seen any good videos on the whole process yet? Sure, Pedo's videos. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. We talked about that, in, didn't we? And um, you were in the other group, right, on Sunday? Um, or was I don't it Wednesday? Re- I don't think I made the first meeting. I think this is my first meeting. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, you are just in the, um, you've done liking on posts in the group. That's what it is. Yes. I know I recognize you. All right. Well, 
I guess we'll call it good right here, guys. Don't want to hold you guys up anymore. I'm not sharing any actual information at this point. It's just kind of chilling. Um, I guess next, I'll try and do this again tomorrow. If you guys want to join up, feel free. Oh, wait, hang on. We got somebody coming in. I think I have my own meeting that I have to host at 7.30. Okay. Well, uh, you know, all the info is going to be put up, so everybody will be able to get a copy of it. Um, if anybody wants to help me admin these meetings, um, you know, like take the files that I put up for the meeting and do the scrolling for me so I don't have to watch both and get myself back and forth. Anybody can just, you know, drop me a message in the group or shoot me a private message and uh, we'll set it up for next week or whatever meeting you want to do. So remember there's three every week. If you want to show up um, Sunday, trust in a state law or trust in a state administration for dummies. Uh, Wednesday is the UCC workbook which if you're into this article nine, um, that's UCC workbook. That's the juice that goes over point for point every bit of the UCC. And we went through, um, the first article and got into the second article in the first meeting on that. Um, so I apologize for not getting as far as I would like to, on this tonight, but I was preoccupied with, with uh, having this meeting later because it's about uh, getting rid of my child support, uh, which will get be one more step of getting my son back. So uh, priorities, you know. Yep. So with that being said, I want to say thank you to everybody. Um, have a good night. Get your rest and uh, get this knowledge, you know. Stay secured. Stay in honor. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out.